space travel very significant breakthrough, this 100,000 mile an hour plasma engine promises to cut travel time to Mars and it's been made by a very young scientist. Nuclear fusion based plasma engines are the future of space travel. They're fast and they're efficient. The CEO of a company that has built a prototype plasma thruster tells news the cutting edge technology promises to slash space travel times outperforming conventional ion engines by a factor of 1,000. It's a thousand times faster. Richard Dinan, the CEO of Pulsar Fusion, former made in Chelsea Star, is certain plasma-based rocket engines will make space travel faster, cheaper, and more efficient. The UK company is based in Bletchley in Milton Keys, that's just north of London, and uh, has built and tested a miniature prototype plasma thruster observing exhaust speeds of 100,000 miles per hour. Dinan told Express UK private enterprises like Pulsar Fusion is pushing the envelope on what's possible in space and what will, of course, sooner than later become standard technology in just a few decades from now. He said speed is space and money. The less time you spend in space, the less equipment you need in space, the less weight you need in space, the less fuel you need in space, and hence it all works in your favor. Traditional rockets may be our only way of escaping the clutch of Earth's gravity, but once in orbit, burning rocket fuel becomes costly and an ineffective way to push the spacecraft forward. The ion engines offer a more efficient electrical form of propulsion by expelling clouds of charged particles to create thrust. The ion thrusters are great for small satellites that only need to make small course adjustments but they do not accelerate fast enough for larger spaceships. Now we come to the plasma thrusters, this new technology. They offer a better alternative for long-term missions and space travel with faster acceleration and higher top speeds. Dinan said, US, the NASA knows that uh, all the scientists who have been focusing on fusion know that if we can get to fusion temperature in the same way, you would do it in a tokamak energy device and you're still using, utilizing a different force. He says, so rather than using the electrostatic, you're using the strong force inside a nuclear reaction and the exhaust speeds you're going to get from that are going to be a thousand times more than ion thrusters. So we're talking about 27,000 kilometers per every single second. So that's nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion ups the energy and the propulsion to a whole new level. Whereas traditional rockets boast a maximum exhaustion speed of about 40,000, pulsar fusion said plasma technology can double that. The prototype thruster built a pulsar and Pulsar has shown it can reach speeds of 100,000 miles per hour. The thruster reaches these speeds by putting a large amount of energy into a propellant gas, which is argon, to convert it to plasma. The plasma is similar to the kind found inside of a nuclear fusion reactor and is shot out at high speeds using an electromagnetic field. On a trip to Mars, the speeds could have make that time in half they'll have that time, H-A-L-V-E, needed to reach the red planet. And even the most optimal launch from Earth will take the spacecraft upwards of six months to reach the neighboring planet, depending on how far Mars is from us at any point in time when that travel takes place. But Mr. Dennis said his company is looking to build an even bigger and hotter plasma engine that could potentially hit speeds of 500,000 miles an hour but the technology is hard and a big challenge is securing funding required to upscale the uh, current Pulsar prototype. Didn't said we want to record exhaust speeds infinitely faster than what we've got. Not that we, we have got, what we've got isn't cutting edge, it is cutting edge, but we want to break records and we want to try and get records. The thing is now, the question that is always in my mind is, okay, you, want, you already have measured 100,000 miles per hour, 
and you want to get to 500,000 miles per hour. The thing is, when you put humans, if you put humans in those crafts, how will they be able to withstand such G-forces? That's my question. If anybody can answer that for me, please do, because that's a big problem. Unless you have something of a, of a kind of a centrifuge that sort of makes, them, um, makes the gravitational forces uh, not affect the astronaut's body. Okay, so this is on Express UK. Very fascinating stuff by um, Sebastian Ketley. And this is by uh, a person who has, again, was a musician. There seems to be a lot of musicians who have turned to astronomy and cosmology. Isn't that something? It's amazing. So we'll see how this works out. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.